Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about what is happening with the current MTG boxes. A lot of you have known uh, from my Patreon, we no longer really open fat packs or booster boxes because I personally don't open them. And I think that they are very low expected values. Now, why is the expected value so low? That's the real question. And I've seen it online where you can buy boxes of any set for $80, $85 on Dave and Adams. And they just don't go. Occasionally you can get it for $90, but that's towards the higher end. And that's like a newer box, right? But for the older boxes, I've seen Electric Moon for under 80. I've seen uh, Shadows Over Innistrad for well under 80. And I've purchased multiple fat packs, but uh, I've stopped doing that now because the expected value on all of these things are so low. Uh, that it's quite amazing. I've never seen a time, since I've been playing Magic since beta, I've never seen a time where just the card values are such, like, dismal, right? Like, Battle for Zendikar, Battle for Zendikar, O for the Gatewatch, Eldric Moon, Shadows over Innistrad, Eldric Moon has Lily, but outside of Lily, what are you hoping to pull? Plus, that doesn't have any masterpieces. Now, when you talk about Amarket and Hour of Devastation, I think it's even worse. Like, we're not trending to the right direction. And when I look at Axeline, I look at the cards in Axeline, I say to myself, wow, if these are the chase cards, I don't know who's chasing what. I don't know if anyone's going to chase any of these. Uh, they're not, in my opinion, it's a dynamic. The dynamic is one, we have the masterpieces, right? But that doesn't explain why Eldritch Moon and Shadows Over Innistrad, the prices, the expected value of a box is so strange. And secondly, internet retailers are just fire selling like crazy. Uh, Dave and Adams uh, on eBay, there's multiple people selling, I assume at a loss. If you buy the box, the store buys a box from $76 and then they sell it for on Dave and Adams, you can find boxes for under $76 shipped to you. And you sell it on TCG Player or eBay, even for $90, the $6 shipping charge, as well as the, the fee, the eBay fee. I don't know how any of these people are making money on selling these boxes this cheaply, but these boxes are that cheap. And it's not just the standard sets, it's all the way to Conspiracy, it's Conspiracy 2. It's a lot of product that is selling for what I consider very strange prices, given what I know about the box. The box price is anywhere between, I think 75, I, I haven't heard of 75, but I know 76, 50 is what my friend store pet pays. But I've heard that sometimes you pay 78 depending on the demand and how many he orders. So there is kind of a range. I think 76.50 to 78.75 would be the range. I don't, and he doesn't get it. Like how are people selling these boxes for $80, $82, $85 online when, you know, you're selling it via eBay. Like there are a lot of eBay fees, a lot of shipping handling fees. Uh, he hasn't yet figured out how they can do it. So what has happened to the Magic Gathering sets? They have just been really bad. Um, I know a lot of you are more casual players and you don't really care about the financial aspects, but we do as this channel, the channel will go more casual, right? But for my video segments, I am going to talk about the financial aspects of, uh, of the game in general and whether or not you should be buying these boxes or in many cases, investing in these boxes. I watched a video from Rudy and this Rudy is, he's very honest about it. And the video is a person who pretty much purchased a case of every new set. He had a case of all the new sets all the way to Khans of Tarkir. Uh, Khans he did okay, but that was the only set that really did okay. He had some older boxes too, but he posted a comment uh, to tell what the price actually was. And he got hosed, like he got owned beyond owned. and. He had to sell to Rudy at like a heavy discount, right? Like a huge discount. So it's one thing when you're buying boxes at a discounted rate. It's another thing when you're buying them at retail or close to retail or at internet prices and then you're trying to make a profit. I don't see how buying a case of every new set, you, okay, I have a case of Amaket, I have a case of Shadows of Innistrad, I have a case of Eldritch Moon, I have a case of 
over the gigawatts. I don't see how this can be considered an investment vehicle with any inkling of success within the next five years. There's just too much. Since RTR, and I will include Contra Tarkir. Contra Tarkir is a little different because the quality of card, not even the quality card, there's just five fetch lines in it. I mean, it's really that simple. If you had to explain why Contra Tarkir is doing better than other boxes, there's five fetch lines. There you go. Five fetch lines. Explanation. Um, and of course, they can print any, let's say they print five more fetch lands. They reprint the fetch lands or the shock lands and a new set. That set will be semi good, even if all the other cards are not good and it's reprinted into oblivion, people will still want the fetch lands. And that's what happened to Carnage Dark here. But when you go all the way to RTR, you can still find RTR for $80 a box all day long. Dragon Maze is under 75 a box. Gatecraft is up 76 a box, like online. Um, and you ask where am I finding these prices? Dave and Adams, they have unlimited supply of this stuff. You can buy as many of these boxes as you want. And I'm, and I hear, secret tip, if you buy more than $500, you get a special discount, but you have to email the guy, right? You've got to email the guy. And the more you buy, the more the discount is. Uh, it's a very hefty discount if you buy more than $500 of these boxes. So that's like a case, right? But you have to know beforehand. Uh, and you just have to email customer support. They'll give you a email of like a person who just does like bigger deals. I don't know. I mean, it's a combination of the masterpieces soaking up a ton of value. And then it's also a combination of just too much of it being printed. And then lastly, the player growth isn't what it used to be. Now I use the term player growth, right? Growth is the key component here. So if growth is like this and it just tails off, it doesn't mean that we lost people. It's just that we didn't gain people. Uh, and that's really critical for Hasbro's plan, right? Hasbro wants to keep gaining people. But if we stop gaining people and we just level off, our population levels off, and I think that's what happened. I don't think we're in decline or we're in any serious scenario where we have to be worried. But if you're printing, assuming that we're growing like exponentially, but we're not, then you're gonna have a lot of extra stuff in this little bubble here, which no one wants to buy. Uh, stores don't want it, distributors don't want it. I still see pre-release kits from Dragon Maze on at my local store. They sell them for like $12, $10, and no one wants them, right? Um, maybe I'll make an offer on them. I do love Dragon Maze. Uh, I do love Dragon Maze. I don't know why I love Dragon Maze, but I do. So yeah, I don't know what is exactly going on and what is happening, but I can tell you this, boxes are the cheapest I've ever seen them and the expected value is the lowest I've ever seen. So yeah, I, you have this masterpiece thing that kind of makes, I don't know, like, let's take Amaket. Amaket, I just posted a video. There are currently free cards over $10 TCG mids. Uh, Ronos, Gideon, and Lily. Even if you hit all three of these mythics, how are you gonna make up the other $50 of the box? Like assuming you don't get an Expedition and you don't get a foil mythic worth a lot of money. And you hit all three of the mythics that you wanted. You're still down $50, even assuming you bought the box at 80. If you bought the box at 100, where does that $70 come from? Like where, where's this value being obtained from? Uh, the answer is nowhere. The answer is you got owned pretty badly um, by opening that box. Now, that being said, if you draft it, you have fun, you buy what you need in terms of singles. Yeah, you can play this game and it's the cheapest you can ever play it, which is fantastic. But if you're investing in boxes or cases, I don't see the outcome being very good for you. Even 10 years from now, I don't see the outcome being very good. I know a lot of people have said that this boxes are very good investments just because they have been good investments in the past. Things change, companies get new CEOs, which Hasbro or Winds of Coast has. Just because something was great, something like, oh, I bought a box of Revise and now it's worth like a lot of money. Maybe if I buy a box of Amaket and I wait 20 years, it's gonna be worth a lot of money. No, no, <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Uh, because just like any, um, I give speeches, I don't know why I do it, but I speak at multi-level marketing events uh, a lot. Um, 
sometimes legal, sometimes marketing, and it's always interesting. I don't do multi-level marketing and we don't have any clients that do it, but one of the things is if it's growing so fast, eventually you hit a point that you can't grow anymore at multi-level marketing because everyone is like buying a product, right? Because it's exponential growth. I think that's where magic is. Magic is at the point where everyone who wants to play magic, everyone who wants to learn about magic, there's enough presence that they would figure that out. Um, and you cannot, and they're printing boxes as if we're still going to exponentially grow, but that's not no longer happened. Like if I, I was super excited when Dragon Maze was $80 a box, like our 75 when it came down to $75 a box, when Dragon Maze was like released, I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. Fat packs are 20 bucks, boxes are $80. This is like the golden age. And that's why I love Dragon Maze so much. But then like every single box right now is like $80, $82. Um, man, like it's crazy. Uh, I don't know, like I'm enjoying this time because I'm taking it less seriously. I'm not buying cases anymore. I'm not even buying boosted boxes anymore to open because there's no point in opening them. I can just buy the singles. Um, I do support my local game store. I am a very big component of that. And you might say, oh, well, my local game store, if I can find like a reasonable price online and I just take it to the store, they'll match the store. Um, so if I find $80 on David Adams and, and David Adams give me shipping, so they add the shipping in, right? I have to find the $80 worth of free shipping to get the $80. And then I give it to them and I was like, oh, well, they also give me some free product and the store will give me some free product too. It's just really hard to complete compete like man i don't know why anyone would be investing in the new boxes right now to be quite honest like it seems like a terrible plan to make money <laughs> anyway that's it guys bye guys